Welcome back, everybody, for another stumble through. My previous stumble through had my high score of YouTube video views had two views in 12 hours. So I thought, why not make another? Today we'll be installing Ansible Tower on OpenShift. Yesterday we installed Cloudbeast Core. I'm going to build out the rest of my DevSecOps environment by installing Ansible Tower now. You might ask yourself, that's weird. I don't remember Ansible Tower being able to be installed on OpenShift that easily. Well, that is something that's kind of new. In version 3.30, of Ansible Tower, uh, they introduced a more containerized version and the installer for it as well. And that's what we're going to be using today. So to get started with that, in fact, let's go ahead and jump into everyone's favorite container platform, OpenShift. Now, as we have done before, we're going to make a new project. We've done it before in the command line. This just go through the GUI. It's a little bit easier for a couple of the steps we need to do. Let's give it a name. I'm just going to call this Ansible Tower. And Ansible Tower. Because I'm very original with the naming schemes. All right. So we've made this project, and now we can deploy pods in here with the deployment configuration, yada, yada. One thing we actually do need to do first, though, is create a persistent volume claim right now we've got some persistent volume available over alongside of our cluster right but for our containers and projects and pods to use them we need to set up a claim for a little bit of that storage so we're going to create a claim post sql for the postgres sql how do you actually say that? Well, I don't know. Database for Ansible Tower. And our project's ready to roll. As long as you don't have any sort of failed or error messages, you should be good to progress forward. This is detailed a little bit in the documentation, which I will link in the description below. But otherwise, there's a little bit of information over what you need to do to actually install and run the... Uh, installation deployment script. It's very similar to what we did before with installing CloudBase Core. Now, to get the Ansible Tower installation, you would go to releases.ansible.com. You may note that it's missing, right? You actually have to kind of physically go into ansible-tower as a subdirectory. Great, now that we're here, we can grab the setup and files and get rolling. We're going to roll on OpenShift this time. 3.3.1 is the most recent version as of this recording. I'm just going to grab the latest. Great. We've got that downloaded. I've already got it extracted here, actually. So let's go ahead and see what we need to do. Let's check out what it in unpacked. So we've got a couple YAML files that will run the Ansible scripts. So Ansible Tower on OpenShift is actually deployed with Ansible. So you will need Ansible installed on the machine you are running this deployment configuration script from. Other than that, you need to make sure that the admin user that you're using to deploy to OpenShift is a cluster admin. So it has the role of a cluster administrator. We've already got that set up from before, so that's great. We don't have to do anything fancy here if you do adding a cluster administrator role to one of your users is not that hard you connect to one of the masters use the oc command execute it's pretty easy either way to install ansible tower and OpenShift, all you need to do really is modify the inventory file so jump into your favorite editor and we'll give this a couple extra lines here now, as we go through this file, we'll see a few variables we need to set. So admin user, that's the first admin user we want to associate with tower. Admin is fine for these purposes because I'm just going to tear this down at the end. We'll give this a 
cheap password as well. So tower secret key. This is something that should be a little bit harder, a little bit longer, maybe a little bit more cryptographically set. So random password generator. You can go to your favorite one. This is the one I use because it uses JavaScript to produce the uh, password locally. So that's pretty nice. I'm just going to remove special characters because I really need that. We'll go for 32 characters since this is a key. Why not? Oop. And generate that. Again, I'm not too worried about this because I'm just going to burn down this project in pod later. So now that we've come down to database settings, if we're already using an existing PostgreSQL server, we can point to that and set the username and password and database and port and all this other fun stuff, and it'll be ready to rock and roll. Now, since we are not using an external database, we're going to actually spin up a pod in this project to host PostgreSQL to support Ansible Tower. All we need to do is populate the username here. So we'll call this tower PGU. Why not? And then we'll go back and generate new password because again, why not? Let's keep things at least slightly safe, right? The power or the tower database. Yeah, we'll just keep that as such. Keep the same port. Let's go back and generate another password for RabbitMQ or message broker. The cookie we can set to something else as well. Let's go ahead with another hmm, 32 character long string. All right, now that we've got a couple passwords set to deploy tower, we need a few other things. So now we have to set up some variables to support the deployment of tower as it is to the OpenShift cluster. You might read this and say, okay, I'm gonna set these variables in the command line before I'm under script. No, I tried that, but again, I forgot that when you execute a script or specifically Ansible playbook in this case, it works in its own shell. So it won't carry those environmental variables that you set in the command line. So we need to set them here again so that they're carried into this execution. All right, so if you are running with self-signed certificates, you will set this skip TLS verify to true. I have signed certificates that check out perfectly fine with 99% of the bundled CA, so I don't need to set that true. False is fine. The OpenShift project we name to Ansible Tower. My OpenShift admin is admin, and my OpenShift password is something that I will not share on video, so I'm going to do a little post movie magic to delete that here. All right. So as soon as we have that running, we actually don't need to set anything else. We can close this out and save it, right? And from there, we can actually run the setup, which is simply this right here. If you're using a login hash, you can pass that along here because I'm recording. I'm just going to do again a little post-production Hollywood magic to deploy this and keep my password safe. And as you can see, we're just running through an Ansible playbook that is going to deploy Ansible Tower into this project. So let's jump into this project and see what's going on. So this playbook right now is at the stage where we're waiting for Postgres to activate. We've deployed and activated this step and so on and so forth. And now we're just waiting for this to come back up. Should show us some metrics here soon enough and progress through this playbook.
All right. So now we're making the management pod. We can see that being built. So as we are progressing through this playbook that is deploying Ansible Tower into OpenShift, you can actually watch it happening live in the OpenShift container platform self-service panel as well, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Because again, you can do pretty much everything through the command line, through the API, through the CLI, and through the web UI. Any I that you can access, really. And I is short for interface. In this instance. Right, we're migrating the database, which means we are creating the database schema and populating it with the necessary seed information. As you can watch, Postgres's consumption increase slightly. All right, there you have it. Nothing failed, a lot changed, a couple things checked out as well, and now it looks like we have Ansible Tower about to start back up on OpenShift. So that's beautiful. You might have noticed earlier, though, a couple of these red tasks fly by. Just because something seems like it failed in a playbook does not mean that it's actually fatal, right? So this is just checking for the Tower Super User. Since this is a new installation, there is none. So now we're actually going to create the super user if it didn't exist, which in this case it didn't. So this failure actually was ignored gracefully, and we were able to progress. So again, don't worry too much if you see a couple of red things. If you upgrade using the same script, you'll see a few of those things turn to changed or OK instead of red. All right, so now that we have it installed, let's check out what happened. We've got this... Ansible Tower pod, a couple of containers in this pod, which kind of breaks away from the one container per pod sort of methodology, which is fine. These things can talk to each other a little bit more easily within themselves in this single pod. All right, so now that we've got this rolling, what we should do actually is access the route that Ansible Tower is living at which is right here. And as we log into Tower with the username and password that we set up before, we are presented with the license screen. So if you have a subscription to Ansible Tower, this is where you will upload your license file. If not, you can get the uh, trial license here. You can request one right there. Otherwise, I will upload mine and we'll make sure to blur this out later too because no one needs to see the contents in my downloads folder all right and of course we're going to read through the entire eula wow why does that still say 2015 come on red hat and because we do want to make tower better let's throw in some telemetry for them because we are nice so I've got my license file uploaded, and boom, it is ready to rock and roll. We have a brand new Ansible Tower 3.3.1 installation running in OpenShift. It's containerized. It's running beautifully, installed very quickly. So now it's enabled us to run our entire DevSecOps platform within OpenShift itself, because earlier we installed CloudBeast Core, now we have Ansible, an Ansible Tower. Things are just starting to beautifully come together. Either way, thank you again for joining. Or actually, you know what? One last thing we should do. A little brief bit of OpenShift administration. This route here is kind of ugly, isn't it? Ansible Tower, web service, Ansible Tower, dot blah. Uh, we should change that, right? So let's go into our Ansible Tower project, and let's actually switch this route around. So we've got a named route here. 
and what we can do is go and edit this route. So let's just go ahead and remove pretty much everything else except for ansible-tower dot our fully qualified domain name. Wonderful. The service name don't change because that's the actual name service that this route is mapped to. Port don't mess with anything else really at all. Just modify this host name and hit save. As long as there's not a, another named route on the OpenShift cluster, it'll check out and boom, we've got this new route and that actually goes back to our Ansible Tower installation. We need to log back in because the cookies don't check out after switching the route. And it helps if you put in the right password too. All right. Well, that is all for right now. Again, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, this gave you a little insight into how OpenShift can enable the entire suite of your DevSecOps environment.